Hello and welcome to another edition of the Alternative Sports Show. I'm Andre Dixon, for once not with my co-host, my pal, my amigo, Matthew Connell, but I'm not alone today. I am joined by the amazing Morgan Lake from Team GB. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We all um, we were just uh, speaking before we uh, obviously started to record, and we're all still recovering from a uh, you know a, a night of of uh, high tension with the with the yeah. England team. Uh, are you fully recovered? Your voice your voice intact. Voice intact. Wasn't this morning, but it's getting there. I think honestly, my heart rate that whole game was just so high. I was going to bed and I was like, am I going to be able to sleep? Um, but no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> It is it's definitely one of those things that brings everyone together. But you know what? It's not too long before everyone's together rooting for you in Tokyo. I mean, how excited are you to be able to go, you know, uh, to, to Tokyo to be part of the team? It must be so exciting yeah. for you. Yeah, so, so excited. Um, yeah, less than two weeks now until I fly out <laughs> there. We've got a holding camp before the actual games, which is in Yokohama, which is like oh, maybe like an hour away from Tokyo or so. So I think that's when it will start to feel real. Like once you get on the plane, once you see all the team. Um, yeah, no, just super excited. I think after watching yesterday as well, and although the crowd won't be as big in Tokyo, like just seeing how much like United, like the country and mm. just how much everyone just kind of for, almost forgot about everything um, for, a little, yeah. for a little bit and just was like, right, okay, sport can bring so much happiness. So yeah, super excited after that. I mean, so so we literally are now, like obviously after after Sunday's, uh, you know, fingers crossed for England, they, they win. But um, yeah. after that, then we're on a countdown for, for 2020 Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, finally going to get to go ahead after, you know, the horrible year that we've all had. But, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're looking ahead now. So have you yeah. managed to, like, you know, kind of speak to the fellow athletes, you know, uh, regarding your expectations or experience, different you know, what's experience regarding the Olympic Games? Yeah, I think everyone's just so excited, A, that it's actually happening. There was so, like, for so long, we were just thinking, is it still going to go on? Especially, obviously, like, with everything that's going on in Japan as well, I think they've just announced another state of emergency. So it's obviously a bit worrying in that sense. Um, mm. But, like, you've just got to have full confidence in Japan that they can um, hold the games safely. That's obviously, like, the first priority. And then, aside from that, I think everyone's just so excited to be able to like showcase sports showcase what we've been working so hard for for the last five years now so yeah morale's pretty high um everyone's just so excited to get out there and, and compete at the olympics so tell me about like the actual schedule what you have to do from now to get ready uh, to, to be able to go what, what is the uh, process um, so from now until we go, we've got um, a couple more weeks training in the UK. Um, obviously, can't really acclimatise here because the weather's not not too similar to uh, Japan. So yeah, once we get out there, we just then have to adjust, obviously, to like the time zone, adjust to the heat. Um, so yeah, we've got like loads of um, like people out there to help us with that and like jet lag strategies, all that. Just kind of acclimatise to to the, like, the new zone um, and then yeah from then on it's literally just final preparations just last jump for me it's like my last jump sessions um, and yeah just last prep I mean all the hard work all the hard training um, now it's just like keeping safe um, mm -hmm. keeping injury free and just making sure like everything everything is geared towards Tokyo like our diet our sleep just everything is like on it so, like, as part of the track and field team, who, like, you know, regarding, like, staff, coaching-wise, mm -hmm. is available to you? Like, who are, are personal to you uh, yeah. and who's accessible to the wider team? Have you mm -hmm. got your own specific people? Um, so, not specifically, but we... So, like, for example, for me, I work with, like, two or three uh, therapists, so, like, physio, um, soft mm -hmm. tissue therapist, osteopath, and like between them, they will also see other athletes, but you are also assigned to them. So I've been working with those people for the last four or five years. So they know exactly how I work, how my body works. So yeah, it's nice to have those exact people out there as well. So people that know you, people that know how to get you in the best shape. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty crit critical. Within a year delay, yeah, how important was it to have alternative tournaments to compete in? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, super important. I mean, obviously nothing really happened in 2020. Um, we had a few competitions, but we just didn't do the right prep for them. So yeah, having, we've had like European indoor championships, we've had Diamond League competitions. So we have had a chance to have these high level competitions competing at the same people that are going to be in Tokyo um, was super important because if you're kind of just like thrown into the Olympics, you don't really want that to be your first your first outing after a year off. So yeah, having those competitions where you can like try and test things. I've had so many competitions this summer where I've tried out different strategies, tried out um, different like training blocks between like before. Um, so yeah, just I think those competitions were almost like practice for Tokyo in a sense. Yeah, honestly, you know, you've got you had to keep yourself busy and motivated. Obviously, it's a disappointment for, for, for it to be delayed. But, you know, mentally, I'm assuming that you've had to like kind of, you know, OK, it's, put, it's, it's, it's delayed for a year. We've got other things to be able yeah. to take care of now. So, you know, I want to yeah. know because I'm, I'm quite nosy as, 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 as if anyone who's seen our interviews before, I'm always asking these questions. But like besides obviously the, the technical stuff, obviously we touched on before with, with the coach and stuff yeah. and other things as well. What essentials do you need to take with you? Like, is there certain like, you know, headphones or, you know, I'm, I'm just saying it now because we've got these things now. <laughs> um, so what, what, what type of essentials do you take with you? um so for me probably the main essentials headphones 100 percent. like i've gotta i've gotta be listening to good music he- um podcasts and just be able to kind of get myself away because that's obviously the easiest way to kind of like get you out of the zone um mm-hmm. and then competition day probably most essential things are anything that's going to give me energy <laughs> so red bull yeah. is huge for me um that's something i'll always always bring with me around the world um so that's great um Love and then it. also things like uh have you seen those like thera guns those like therapy guns that you can they're like oh, the Ronaldo uses? yeah yeah um, yeah I like that. So those are pretty essential um yeah and i guess just like little home com- comforts like in terms of, like food and stuff um to bring with me like Honestly, uh, you know, as soon as you said the Red Bull, I, th- I think I think we all need that from after yesterday. I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I'm in the car. I'm about to do my second session, so I'm like, right, it's coming straight out of the boot after this. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky. You see, Red Bull, you got to send us some here. I, I need a stock here just so I can reach it yeah. after the interview. You <laughs> so you know studying um at the same time obviously during during the countdown to this uh, obviously massive occasion for you tell us yeah. about studying psychology over at Loughborough mm-hmm. so yeah I finally finished this year I've been Yay. so I started in last <laughs> I know it's also the longest five years ever so I was actually meant to graduate last year um but I was like no I don't want my studies to clash with um Tokyo so I'm gonna defer it to 2021 where it's like a bit of a quiet year and obviously then the pandemic happened and um Tokyo was like (laughs) um postponed to this year so I've had my dissertation and obviously my Olympic prep at the same time so yeah I'd be lying at times if I wasn't just crying like why am I doing this I hate why am I doing (laughs) a degree um but yeah it's over and I did really enjoy it like the last year has been stressful but in a sense like it's almost been a distraction as well I think if I was always just focused on training just focused on competing it could kind of take me the other way so I think having that distraction um in a sense has been been really important just kind of like keep my mind moving yeah congratulations to you you know I can I can barely do one thing at a time like you know you're competing in the uh, going to be competing in the Olympics and in your studying as well like come on like salute to you yeah, you know, honestly. Um, but so, so obviously we touched on, on you know, obviously I will keep an eye on, on, obviously on things going on in the UK at the moment regarding football. Mm-hmm. But is there any other alternative sports that you're a fan of personally? So obviously like Wimbledon's on at the moment, so really into yeah. tennis. Um, sad we can't really go, go there this year. Um, I think from like now until Tokyo, everyone's just so set on like, we can't get track and traced because otherwise yeah. we'll miss the games. So it's like pretty much just watching everything on the TV at the moment. So yeah, loving football, loving the tennis. I think it's just getting everyone excited for like a summer of sport. 
um, which I feel like we really need. So yeah, really into that. Um, I love basketball as well. So yeah, I'm seeing all the Kobe and. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, honestly, um, I, as soon as you said that, I was just like, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wondering if we was going to move to. So, yeah, I was wondering if we, if we was going to move to, uh, to, to um, get you into American football as well. I was, you know, because I'm always recruiting people for uh, to, to be a Giants fan. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah, if you, I, have, if, I have seen them play. Actually, I have seen the Giants play. So, uh, so is that official? Are you? Uh, am I? Have I got you down as as being a Giants fan? I don't think just yet. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more I might get that. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get you after, um, you know, uh, after the Olympics, definitely for sure. Yeah, obviously, there's uh, the, the unfortunate star, Shakiri. I've totally forgot her surname now. Who, who, yeah, Richardson, who's had to, um, you know, obviously forsake going to, to the Olympics, which is such a, you know, if you work so long to be able to get there. Mm -hmm. Like, what type of, you know, sac you know, regarding sacrifices, because obviously, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people who are like, well, obviously she knew the rules and she should have, mm -hmm. you know, paid attention to those rules, you know, uh, and it's just one week to go and then, you, you know, you, you messed that up. So how yeah. hard is it, you know, especially you being a young person, to be mm -hmm. so dedicated and focused to be able to stay on track and follow these rules? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, sacrifice, I guess, I guess, it comes down to choice at the end of the day like obviously there are a lot of sacrifice you have to make in terms of like your family and friends and not being able to see them as much like even just down to watching the football on Sunday like my whole mm. family like oh I have a party at home and I'm like I can't come home like it's two and a half hour drive for me I've got training the next morning so I can't like enjoy that in the same way that everyone else can but yeah. at the end of the day it's like focusing on the bigger goal is what gets you like keeps you on track and keeps you yeah. focused on everything and I guess like regarding that case and like, the anti-doping rules and stuff um it's just part of the job like we have to we have to know on it and it's not something we can really afford to slip up on and although it's obviously like a huge shame for, like the sport and for her um yeah yeah it's just one of those things you just have to you just have to keep on top of and I think it's almost like a reminder for all of us athletes like no one gets away with it you have to always be on it and the consequences are huge so yeah you just got to kind of think of the bigger picture I, I, and and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna try my best to to uh get extract some more information from you uh about your things that you're into so we have this thing called um this mm -hmm. section called recommendations so it's where we get people to be able to talk about uh -huh. like things they're into just so we can you know if there's a new song or show for us to be able to you know kind of share that with you now I'm going to ask you mm -hmm. what is, what are you watching you know in your spare time on Amazon Netflix or Disney Plus So on at the moment I'm watching the most random show on so on Disney Plus I got Disney Plus literally just yeah. to watch One Division which I absolutely loved um, Worth watching. and then I was like oh my god there's so many shows yeah, so so good, so good, definitely. So that's the so, so that's the that's that. the one you you suggest I, I should definitely watch that one. Yeah, and I'm not even a Marvel fan. Like I barely watch. I mean, any Marvel fan who hears me say you're watching One Division and you haven't watched the Marvel but this shows, I'm like, um, so, <laughs> but yeah, no, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, um, they're gonna come for you now. Any other shows? So on Prime, I feel like I've, I feel like. I've got to a stage of prime where I'll start watching something, get really into it, and then it and then it's like, oh, this is not available anymore. So I was watching Friday Night Lights on there. Um oh. and then that I got taken off Prime. Or it didn't get taken off. I think it got um you had to pay for it. And I was like, right, okay. Same with One Tree Hill. So now I'm watching Desperate Housewives. Um <laughs> just like Oh I my god, you you watch. got a you got a whole show, you got a whole library you're going through there. <laughs> I know. I don't know. It's because I've now got that free time. I'm not studying, so I'm like, I can actually watch TV. I'm not have to go out anywhere. So, <laughs> so That's yeah. True. Well, now you can watch all the Marvel films now. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saved you there. <laughs> um, right. So let's get into like a music that you're into, or any of these like podcasts that you're listening to. What, what would you suggest, like, art, music-wise, and then if there's any podcasts, um, second. 
Uh huh. So music wise, um, J. Cole, super into the moment, new album, um, loving that. And then I feel like my music taste is just kind of goes up and down, like whatever, whatever's kind of like on at the time. I think a lot of music now is like from TikTok. <laughs> I'm like, please just yeah. stop. I like to hear <laughs> songs. I'm like, <laughs> are you not a fan of TikTok? No, I am. That's the thing. I get I get caught up in that as well. Um, yes, yeah, so that's fun. Um, yeah, just kind of like hip hop, R and B, um, just kind of whatever fits the mood. I love making playlists for competitions. So, like before British Champs, um, the weekend before, just kind of like curating a playlist and just it really helps me just like get in get in the zone for whatever comp I'm doing. So, yeah, love that. So, what, then, what what is what is, you know, before we go into the podcast bit? What uh-huh. is that song? That that one that you have do you have a, like a song that you listen to to pump you up to get you in the mood before you compete? Drake features very heavily in all my yeah. playlists. <laughs> um what what kind of songs? I guess energy. That's always like a good that's always a ah, good nice. song. Um to kind of like get me in, get me into the mood. Um yeah, that's he's always like a big, yeah, in loads of my in loads of my playlists. So yeah, <laughs> definitely any Drake song will, will get me hyped. Love it, love it. And uh, any podcasts? Um, podcast wise, again, a bit of a mix. Uh, uh, Table Manners, which is like Jessie Ware and, and her mum. That's like, I love that. It's probably my fave, my favorite podcast. Um, and then Hip Hop Saved My Life by Ramesh Raganathan. It's like nice. really good. I love that podcast. Um, yeah, super, like just loads of mixes. So yeah, I always, I drive quite a lot um, to one of my physios is in Oxford, which is like an hour and a half drive. So whenever I'm doing that drive, I've always, yeah, I've always got podcasts on. I was, uh, before we start recording, I was complimented Morgan on the lovely car that she's driving in. It looks very comfortable, very fast in, as well. It is <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so yeah, but before we get you out of here, um, give me three top tips for, for people that are looking to be where you are in a few years time, you know, students that are looking on, uh, thinking, yeah. you know what, she's an inspiration to me. I want to, I want to do that too. What would you say um, is the thing, things that you'd actually say to them? You know, this is what you need to do. Um, sorry, so I'm get, getting a parking spot on the door out. Um, sorry. sorry. Um, so yeah, three <laughs> top tips. The first one would probably be like, just to have fun and enjoy yourself like that for me it's like the number one thing because I think sometimes I put so much pressure on myself to perform and you almost feel like you have to like do something so for me it's like you should like first and foremost just really want to do well really want like really just love what you're doing um that's a huge one for me um secondly would be not to compare yourself to other people um I think it's obviously really easy in an individual sport where you're literally competing against other people, but everyone's got different journeys. Everyone, um, yeah, everyone's got different paths to to their goals and everyone's goals are going to be different at the end of the day. So yeah, just focus on yourself and don't don't compare yourself to others. Um, I guess the focus on yourself could be a third one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, obviously. Well, yeah, especially obviously what we touched on earlier on with Shakira Richardson, you, you know, yeah. focusing on yourself and making sure you're dedicated. I'm sure that's something that, you know, yeah. if you want to make it to where Morgan's going to be, national TV with all of us cheering her on, you know, you have to be able to do that. Morgan, how do people find you on social? So my Instagram at is Morgan, at Morgan Alexandra Lake. And on Twitter, I think it's, Morgan underscore A underscore Lake. We will be all cheering you on. Very, Thank very you. proud of you. Honestly, you're a def- def- definite inspiration to, to, to me much. and everyone else who, who, who watches our show as well. Thank you so much for your Thanks, time. Man. Morgan, salute. See ya.